everyone, Ben Brandt here, and today we're going to build a shelf with compartments for my office. Now I needed a shelf to go up above my desk, something flat on the top to hold some books and compartments underneath to hold any other stuff I want to keep uh, nearby. Now I managed to score this nice big piece of plywood here for free off of Craigslist. Now it's got some black stain on one side, uh, a little bit of glue and some nail holes along the edges. But for the most part, we've got a nice big oak veneer piece of plywood here that'll work just great for this project. So despite the imperfections on the surface, this is all going to get painted white to match the decor of the office. So this will work just great and uh, can't beat a piece of free material. So let's turn this thing into a shelf and see how it turns out. Okay. So the first step to tackle here is the large solid piece across the top of the shelf. Since I already had the design worked out, I knew roughly how big it had to be, so I had to get that one big piece out of the board first. So I checked the edges here to see how much of the uh, rough glue and nail holes I had to get rid of, and measured in from the side to make sure I had enough good wood for that large piece. Marked a line across the board, I measured the distance from the blade to the edge of my saw, and found a nice long straight board here to clamp down as my guide. And I ran all the way down that board to cut off the first piece so I'd have something a little bit more manageable to run through the table saw. I ran it through the table saw to get it down to its final width. Then headed over to the miter saw to give it one nice square edge. Measured out the overall length that we needed and cut off the other edge. And at this point I headed down to its overall size and had to cut out the different depths along the front for the uh, unusual shape. Now since this was such an unusual shape, I did my best to keep my cuts as straight as possible. So I started off with the miter saw to get at least partial cuts on all of the side edges. And then I use the table saw to get most of the front edges. And in the corners where I couldn't get in with the, the saw blades, I used the pull saw to finish them off nice and sharp. Now for this last little inset area, I couldn't get in there with the table saw or the miter saw, but it wasn't very deep, so I figured I would just sort of carve it away with the router and clean it up with the pull saw. So I measured my router and figured out how far back I'd need to place an edge guide so I wouldn't cut too deep into the material and clamp that down and started routing away at it but I hadn't clamped it down very well and the router caught and this happened. So my guide ended up moving on me, and ended up cutting out a bit too much. That's bad. Which wasn't super critical, we could change the size of this, and I wasn't about to start this piece over again. So I adjusted my guide back a little bit, clamped it down with some much stronger F-style clamps so it wouldn't move on me. We're going to have to make this shelf a little bit narrower so I can carve away this mess. So I'm going to do what I should have done before and set up a edge guide here so I can't go too much farther. Next I started working on some edge banding for this project. Now I've never done edge banding before and I'm sure the iron-on stuff would have been much easier, but I wanted to give this a try and I figured if I screwed it up it wouldn't matter too much since I'm painting over it anyway. Now I had this scrap oak in the garage so I set up the table saw to rip down a bunch of thin strips to be used for my edge banding. 
and then went ahead and cut lots of small pieces and started gluing them down to the front edges of my piece. And now we just let the tape clamp everything in place until the glue dries. Now with the edging being a little bit thicker than my material, I had to do a little bit of cleanup here with the flush trim router bit. Knocking that down so it's flush with the top of the material. Then I got out the hand plane to finish off those inside corners that I couldn't get with the router. And gave everything a light sanding just to make sure it was all smooth. Next step on this top piece for my shelf here is I want to cut some dado slots here for the vertical pieces to slot down into. Uh, partially because I want to remove some of this finish here so I'll have a better glue surface and it should just make things easier to assemble. However, here's a sample of our material and my three quarter inch router bit is just a little bit wider than the material. It's about a sixteenth of an inch, it's hard to see here, but I, I ran a test cut with this and it was too loose. So this is too big. Over here in my router I've got a half inch bit. Of course that's too small so we need to figure out a way to cut this slot at just the right width. So first step here I've got a piece of half inch MDF that matches the width of my router bit. And this happens to be inch and three quarter piece to just help me visualize the distance out to the edge of the router. So kind of see these two next to each other you can kind of visualize the path of the router and the and the base. Imagine this half inch path is the first pass that I want to cut and then this pushes out to the edge of my router. We'll square that up and make sure it matches up here where I want it to be. So my router is going to follow this path here to cut this first slot. Now after that I'm going to have to move over the difference between half inch and my material. So this piece represents the width of the dado that I want to cut. I've added a little bit of tape here to make it a little bit wider so I can fit it in. So I'm going to stick this out here. Make sure this is all square and matches up again. Now we'll clamp this into place. We'll take these out of the way and we'll make our first pass. Now at this point we take out the dado size spacer and drop in our router bit size spacer and we moved over just the right amount to get our perfectly sized dado. Clean up the edges a little bit. And test the fit. Nice and snug. And once I worked out the technique, I could just repeat it for every dado across the whole piece. 
The dados on the outside edges were just a little bit different. I used the material size spacer to get flush with the edge of the piece, and then the router offset spacer to find the edge of my guide here with the square. Then I followed that guide to get the first cut on the inside, and then spaced out a little bit to get the final cut on the outside. Now I should also point out that I didn't get it on camera, but I added another rabbit slot along the back edge of the piece. We're going to use that for a horizontal support piece that's coming in later. But that pretty much wraps up all the complicated stuff on this top piece. And now we just need to cut out lots of different size rectangles for all the vertical and horizontal pieces that make up all the cubbies under the shelf. And we just work through a lot of the same techniques that we used on the top piece. Cutting down the rough size pieces, adding some edge banding to the front, trimming it down, And once I had the edge banding in place, I cut them down to their final width. Now I've got the shell sitting upside down here and the what are going to be the bottom edges, we'll need some edge banding too. So we go through this process again, gluing on our edge banding, letting it dry, lots of drying time. And while that's drying, we can work on the pieces that'll be the bottom of each compartment, but we got to get them just to the right width here. So I line it up with my top piece to get that width just right and cut it down to fit. Now we can see that matches up with the uh, raised area on the top piece. Here's another bottom piece. We've got to rip it down to its final depth. Now at this point I got the edge banding done on all my vertical pieces and I'm marking out a notch that I need to cut out along the back for a support piece. So I'll just mark those with a sharpie so I make sure I cut it in the right spot. And we'll cut out these notches to fit a piece of material across the back here and make a couple of cuts with the table saw. We'll cut most of the way with the table saw and then finish it up with the pull saw. So it's back to our plywood to cut that support strip to go along the back. We'll rough cut that with a circular saw. Run it through the table saw to get a nice clean edge. Cut it down to the proper length. And now this piece is going to have one visible edge, so it's going to get the same edge banding treatment that we've been using elsewhere. But my edge banding pieces aren't this long, so I want the seams to be hidden by the uh, vertical pieces of the shelf. So I'm marking out where all those seams could be hidden. And then we'll lay out our edge banding so that those seams fall 
at the right spot. More glue and tape. And then we come back and clean that up again on the router. And of course that piece has gotten a little bit thicker now with the edge banding, so we'll rip it down to its final width. And our support piece is ready to go. Now at this point, all of my pieces have been edge banded and cut to the proper size and shape. We'll just give everything a nice sanding to uh, take off some of the finish, uh, get rid of some of that black stain, and just make everything smooth and easier to paint later on. Now most of the shelf is going to be assembled with screws, but there's a few places where that's a little bit more difficult, so we're going to do a little bit of dowel joinery. So I designed and 3D printed this center finding tool. I've got another video about it, which I'll link to. But I can use this to find the center of my board and mark a little indent in there so I can drill out that hole for a dowel. So we'll cut up a bunch of quarter inch dowels to be used for later. Clean up the ends to make them easier to insert. We'll take those center marks and drill them out for the dowels. Now I need to drill holes in the side pieces so I can mount these shelves in the right place. So I've got a couple spacers here holding up this shelf. I've put my dowel centers into the holes that I drilled. We line that up with the side piece and just tap it with a hammer to make a mark on the adjoining piece. Then I can drill those out. And put it all back together with the dowels and that'll hold it in place so I can glue it up later. So with all of that worked out, I can now dry fit everything together. Our shelves are in the right spot, everything's level, and we can move on to some more assembly. And now we can finally start putting this whole puzzle back together with glue and screws. So we've got the top piece flipped over here and starting to put down some glue for that support piece to go across the back. Make sure we've got everything clamped down into place. And then we can flip it over and start adding screws. So I threw together this little tool here to help me make marks about three eighths of an inch in from the edge. So I was landing about centered on my piece on the other side. And then I would pre-drill for the screws here with a countersink bit. Run in a wood screw. Throw in a little glue and a dowel here to fill the hole and hide the screw. Then cut off the excess dowel and let it dry. 
once that support piece was secure, we went forward and followed the same process here for all of the vertical dividers of the shelves. Marking out, pre-drilling those holes, and then progressively clamping each piece into place, pre-drilling, screwing them together, and gluing everything else together as we went, including the, the dowel joinery. Now once all the glue had dried on all the plugs that we put in to cover up our screws, I went back and cut them off flush, smoothed them out with a hand plane, and just gave everything a good sanding. Now inevitably there were a few places that needed filling in, whether it was from chipped out wood or just other seams that didn't fit together as nicely as I'd like. Uh, so I filled those spots in with a little wood filler, let it set up, and sanded everything nice and smooth before we moved on to paint. Now I'm generally not a big fan of painting, but since white was the color we were going for, it was kind of necessary. And since we had all this black stain that needed covering up, we wanted to make sure I gave it a good base coat of primer to really cover up all that dark color. So I gave this thing about two coats of primer on every little surface that I could find with the paintbrush. A little sanding in between. And once we had a good base of that white primer on, I moved on to a little bit glossier uh, spray paint to give this thing a nice finished look. And finally, after a few coats of paint, this thing was ready to install. So I headed into my office here, and first step was to locate all the studs, because I wanted to make sure this thing was nice and secure. So I laid out a piece of blue tape across the wall, broke out the stud sensor to find all my studs and mark them on that tape, and then was able to use that tape like a story stick here to transfer that down onto my shelf along that back support, and pre-drill all of my holes for screwing this thing into the wall. And I made sure to put a piece of wood on the other side here to prevent blowout on the front. So we've got all my holes pre-drilled, started a few screws, marked out where I wanted the top to sit, got it up on the wall, ran in one of my screws, Made sure everything was level, and ran in the other two. So I gotta say I had a lot of fun with this build. I really had fun coming up with the design, working on a lot of new and interesting woodworking techniques, and I was able to cover up all my mistakes with plenty of paint. Really enjoy having this thing here in my office. I can store my books up on top and lots of other odds and ends in the compartments. So, pretty happy with this one. Thanks for taking the time to watch, and we'll see you next time.